Hi guys, and welcome to this quick demonstration of how to get document sets into Microsoft Teams. So to start off with, we are going to be creating a team using Orchestry. We've got a template ready. It's a demo template, and we're using this because within Orchestry, we can do things such as set amazing features like archivals, decommissioning the teams when we no longer need them. So it's great for these demo purposes. So I'm actually going to go and select this demo team. I'm going to give it a workspace name. So into there, I'm just going to type in um, client onboarding. We're going to use this for a client onboarding process. I can assign some metadata to that as well. So I'll put some operations and um, Europe in there. And once that's done and validated that workspace, I'm going to go and click continue. Um, I don't need to add in channels, but if I could do, I could get Orchestry to do all of this for me. Uh, but for this demo, we're not going to be doing that. Um, I'm just going to add in the required number of owners and members. Again, great feature of Orchestry, handling all of this sort of um, teams and workspace provision and governance for me. Um, I want it to be a private team. I'll just click continue to that. And then I am going to check everything is good. Looks good to me. I'm going to click yes, I am done. And that is going to go off and provision that team for me. So what it's doing, again, if you would like a demo of Orchestry, we can do that for you. We also offer free trials um, and we can also run um, health checks of your environment using Orchestry. So it's a really great tool. If you're interested, please reach out and we will get that sorted for you. So um, as this is going through, um, I should have some lift music in here, hopefully. Um, great, that's now done and I can jump straight into my team directly from Orchestry once that's provisioned. And within there, I can see I've got the general tab perfect and I can go to files because I want to head over to SharePoint to get um, my document sets created so let's click on those three dots and click open in SharePoint okay so now we're in SharePoint I can get rid of all of these annoying pop-ups that happen let's close that one down as well um, and the first thing I'm going to do within here is to get my document sets um, available in my site so I'm going to go to the site um, information area and go to the um, site settings so all site settings and within here under site collection admin i'm going to go to site collection features and i am going to add the document set feature and click activate to that perfect now that's activated i can head back to my document library and i now need to go and set up my document sets so again to do this a couple of first things i want to make sure i've got available for my document sets is some metadata um, that can be used for them. So to do this, I'm just going to go add in some basic metadata. So client ID, um, probably quite useful if we're going to be tracking our IDs. Um, I can add another single line of text into there. So that might be the client address, for example, um, I could use within there. Now, again, I'm just using single line of text elements here, but if you wanted to, you could use various other bits of metadata. So I could use choices, all of those sorts of great things. Um, lastly, in here, I'm just going to put in the deal value. Um, so the value of the deal. Again, there's some random metadata we want. You can use whatever you like. Once that is done, that's looking good. My library's got a bit of metadata in there now. I am now going to go to the cog in the top right, and I am going to go to library settings because I need to get these document sets added as a content type. So I'm going to go to add from existing site content types and I will select the document set option, click add and then click OK. Once that is done and that's pushed that into the library, um, I can now click on the document set and I can go and do the document set settings. But also before I do that, making sure that I add those library columns to the document set. So this is where I can just add the client address, the client ID, the deal value, for example. I will leave the description off because we don't necessarily need to use it, but I could add that in if I wanted to. Um, I can click OK. That will then make sure that those uh, columns are available to the document set. And when I go into document set settings, um, this is where I can start setting it up. So in here, I can add the shared columns I would like. So description, client address, client ID, deal value, for example, add that to the welcome page if I want. Um, but also um, set some default content for my document set. So say, for example, I had a folder structure. I could build out quite a nice folder structure in here with all of the documents or the templates pre-populated uh, within that folder structure as well, should I want to. So there we go. We can see that's all done. I can click OK to that. I've just chosen one folder, by the way, but you could add more. You could add um, uh, sort of multiple folders in there. So that's now done. It's all looking good. I'm going to go back to the document library itself. So let's head back that way. And now I'm in, in here, I can go click on new and I should be able to select the new document set. So there we go. Let's click onto that document set. When I do, that is going to open up a document set form for me to fill out. So I'm going to type in the name of the client, for example. Uh, in here, I can enter the, um, the description, the address of the client, whatever I'd like to do. Um, so again, as I mentioned, client address, let's actually take that part out and put that in the right place. There we go. 
sorted. And in here, I can actually type in what the description of that client is. So client description. Um, so we're going to create some tools to capture the Roadrunner. Once that's done, I can then go down to client ID, one, two, three, four, five, and then the deal value of that client. And again, we can really mix and match these um, metadata fields. But once I click save, that's going to go out and actually build out that structure for me directly within the library with the correct folders and all of the content inside those folders. So if I click into agreements, what I will notice in there is that I have the document template that I wanted with all of the metadata assigned from that document set. Now, this is perfect because any new documents I create will automatically inherit all of that metadata for me. OK, so this is great for SharePoint, but we want our end users to be able to use Teams. And as you'll notice here, this is not a channel folder, so it's currently purely in SharePoint. But what we can do is we can actually take the name of this um, document set and create a channel in Microsoft Teams. And as long as we provide the same name as the channel to the document set, so Acme Limited, and when I click Add, what that's going to do is actually going to use that document set as the storage location for the channel. And with that, we will then get some great features to be able to use in Microsoft Teams, such as, there we go, I've got the agreements folder in there. Um, and if I go into there, I can see all of that metadata automatically applied. I could upload new content into there, or I could just drag and drop a file from my desktop, for example. Um, and when that's uploaded into Microsoft Teams, it's going to inherit all of that metadata. So all of that valuable metadata you want to store against clients or partners or whatever it is you're capturing, you can do from using this process. So this is really useful. Your end users no longer have to upload metadata against the channel anymore. It's all done for them. It's good to go. Again, it's all the default metadata that they would want. Um, and we can even use it for things such as inserting um, quick parts into documents as well, say, for example. So it's a really useful, versatile um, approach. Now, I hope you found that useful um, and a good way of being able to add document sets into Microsoft Teams. Um, give it a go. Let me see how you get on. We are going to be doing some more videos of this type very, very soon. In fact, we're going to take this process and show you how you can automate it using Power Automate. So um, I believe my colleague, uh, Michael Putner is going to be taking that one um, and he'll be showcasing that end to end, maybe also adding some um, metadata inside the documents too. But I hope you found this useful. Um, thanks for watching and we will catch you soon.